Thank you, Pastor Landon. Um, so first of all, I want to start, we want to start by um, sharing something super exciting that's going to be happening this May. So May 26th to 28th, we are having a kids conference. It's for kids ages 8 to 12, and they're going to come with their ministry leaders. It's not just for our church. This is like a regional conference. And so the theme, it's called, the conference itself is called World Changers Kids Conference, because we believe that our kids can change the world. <laughs> um, and the theme this year is Go With the Flow, Discovering a Supernatural Friendship with Holy Spirit. So over the course of this conference, kids will learn how to go with the flow as they are equipped to hear and follow the leading of Holy Spirit. Uh, our desire is to empower, empower kids to follow Jesus um, and to grow in their friendship with Holy Spirit, to encounter in God in worship, to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, through teaching. And of course, there's going to be some, lots, some fun games because you have to have games. Jesus loves fun games. Um, there's going to be three breakout sessions. And so um, one of them will be on hearing God's voice. One will be on understanding the dreams that God God gives us at night, and then the other one will be on healing. So we are super excited. Does that sound exciting to anybody else? Yeah. So I don't know if you, yeah. So Amy Lynn put this together. Is this not amazing? Can we all thank Amy Lynn? So awesome. Um, yeah, so we've been praying uh, over this conference, and we really believe that kids are going to be set free and set on fire for Jesus at this conference, and we are so excited. So of course, we want to invite you to be a part of it. Um, there are so many roles that need to be filled, so it's an all-hands-on-deck kind of conference. We need everybody's help to, put, to pull this off. And so um, some opportunities include helping in the kitchen, um, being on the ministry team, greeting, helping with registration, helping set up decorations, uh, interceding, leading games, and the list goes on. And so we actually have a full list at the back with Haley at the resource desk in the foyer. Uh, so if this interests you at all, please, please, please go to the resource desk. Um, give us your name, your number, your email, and tell us what role you'd be interested in. Because like I said, this is all hands on deck, and we're going to see um, our region transformed by the power of God. Yes. Amen. So we've obviously taken a lot of time to pray into this conference. Um, Haley's asked me to be a part of it in a couple different capacities, and honestly, every time I just take the opportunity to, to pray and ask God, like, what, what are your, what's your heart for this conference? What are you planning to do? What do you want the kids to receive? What do you want the leaders to receive? Like, I'm just blown away by the fact we are, are doing this, guys. Like, there, this is a conference, not a watered-down experience for kids to be equipped and empowered and filled with Holy Spirit. Like, this is no small thing. No one, to my knowledge, I, maybe you can enlighten me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, no one else is doing this, especially right now during COVID and all the things, right? This is huge. So we've been praying into it. We invited our leadership team to pray into it with us. And it was amazing just how much God has to say about this. Um, I want to share like a little bit of a prophetic word with you guys. There's, I honestly could just like come up here and preach about prophetic things God is saying over this conference. So to save us the time, I'm going to try to keep it brief. But three of the things that God has spoken to me that he wants to do in this conference um, is that I believe that he is starting something in kids that is going to continue for years to come. He wants to speak to them and encounter them in ways that will set them apart, set them in motion, and propel them in a direction. I believe that some kids will receive their life callings at this conference, while others will encounter God in a way that leaves them wanting more and is beyond what they have experienced up until this point. The second thing I saw was mantles, anointings, giftings, and Holy Spirit flowing from adults to kids. I believe that there are things we have fought for, gifts we've been given, ground we have taken, and knowledge we have attained that will be freely given as inheritance to the kids at the conference. And the third thing, I believe God is wanting to activate and increase our sensitivity um, to his leading and allow us as a church family to sense his moving and his Holy Spirit and respond accordingly. As the conference title says, God is wanting to improve our ability to corporately go with the flow. And that's just three of the things, guys. I have like a whole page document of stuff people have said about this conference. So we invite you to honestly just let that hit you and ask the Lord, like, what is my part in this? 
I, I really believe, and, and I say this with all the love in my heart, I don't think it's an if I should be a part of this, it's what is my part in this. And whether that is simply, and not, honestly, simply is the wrong word, whether that is praying over these kids and leaders and joining us that way, or whether that is giving your time that whole weekend to be volunteering, there is no small part to play, and we are uh, this is this is our church conference, guys. Like it is, like Haley said, this is all hands on deck, and this is an honor to be able to love these kids this way. So, all right. <laughs> so, getting into the the message, it was cool. We um, had been kind of looking over those prophetic words, and then Landon asked Haley and I to speak on legacy today. And I don't know about you, but the passing on of mantles and giftings and everything from generation to generation sounds a lot like legacy to me. So I feel like we're kind of, it's all connecting. So today we're looking at legacy. And I know that's a big word, kiddos. Um, so we're just going to give you like a quick definition. So legacy is when we pass on something from an ancestor, which might be somebody we're related to, or a predecessor. So that's someone we're not related to, but is a teacher or a mentor in our life. Okay, so ancestor is someone you're related to, like mom or dad or grandma and grandpa. Predecessor is someone like well, honestly, in kids' ministry, it would be Pastor Haley and myself are an example of a predecessor for you guys. Or there's other people in your life, like maybe a music teacher or things like that, that are investing in you and passing on what they have to give to you. So what comes to your mind when you think of legacy? I'll give you guys like just a second to think. Like we kind of listed some examples already, but what comes to your mind when you hear the word legacy? So maybe it's the passing on of traditions. Lots of families have incredible traditions. I, I love getting like recipes that are like tried and true, passed down from like grandma to mother to daughter kind of thing. Like it, it's so fun to learn about those things and experience those things. Maybe you think of generations. Maybe you think about how we're all connected as great grandparents and grandparents and parents and siblings and the passing on from one generation to the next. Maybe you think of, whoops. I lost my notes there. Maybe you think of wealth or provision. That's biblical, that we leave an inheritance for not just our kids, but our children's children. Maybe you think about how you will be remembered or what others will say about you after you pass away. Maybe you think of your accomplishments, inventions you want to make, or ideas you have that you want to pass on. And maybe you think of your faith, about how you hope to have a family legacy of faith. So we're going to kind of take a look at legacy from a biblical perspective, and we're going to look at Paul to do that. So Paul really believed in the importance of legacy. He believed in the passing on from teacher to student, from parent to child, whether spiritual parent and spiritual child or biological. And he believed on passing on from one believer to the next. He states time and time and time again, when we did like a little Google search on how many times the Paul uses to be imitators is how, how he words it. It's over and over and over again in his letters. So kids, I know you've been, we did worship. Now you're sitting for a bit. I'm going to ask all the kids in the room to stand up. So quick, 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 stand up. We're going to play a super fast game of Simon Says, because Simon Says is a great example of what it means to be an imitator. How many people have played Simon Says? So whatever Simon Says, you do, right? And this is what Paul is talking about. Whatever he is doing, he wants the people who are following him to do. Whatever he is saying, he wants the people who are following him to say. So kids, if I said, Simon Says, touch your head. Nicely done. If I said, Simon Says, pat your head. So not just touch it, but pat it. Simon says, pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time. Simon says, pat your head, rub your tummy, and jump up and down. Stop jumping. Oh, I didn't say Simon says. Got you guys. All right, Simon says, sit down and give your parents the most wonderful listening because you are the most wonderful kids. <laughs> if we get an amen for nothing else, that'll be it today. <laughs> So Simon says this is this perfect example of what it means to be an imitator, right? What it means to, to pass on something from someone to someone else. 
And it may not be that obvious in our lives, but we all have people we're imitating. Our, our parents might not be saying, Simon says, clean your room. Or we might not be going to soccer practice and the coach is saying, Simon says, like, pass the ball to, I don't, actually don't know anything about soccer, so I don't know what any of the players are called. <laughs> that was a bad example. But anyway, I'm sure the, the coach would have something good to say. <laughs> oh, man. So it may not be that obvious, right? We don't have people Simon says in our life, but we all have people we are imitating and we all have people that we aspire to be like. Kids, like I want to think, I want you to think of somebody that you want to be like, whether it's like a superhero or a musician you love or a famous athlete, like the Olympics are on and, and my son has come home from watching, they've been watching them on their lunch break at school and he's been like, man, this is amazing. Like I would love to be able to do that. So we all have these people that we aspire to be that we're imitating in our life. And we also have people who are imitating us. And this is why many friends have similar interests. All right, kids grow up. It's inevitable to kids. I'm just forewarning you. You will grow up to say things and do things like your parents do. And you don't realize how weird your family is until you get a roommate or get married and you're confronted with all the things you have imitated that you thought were normal. And somebody tells you that there's a different way to load the dishwasher. Or there's a different way to do like so many of these things we don't realize we've imitated until you meet somebody else who's been imitating someone else and they go, that's not the only way to do this. So legacy takes imitation one step further, okay? So we go from imitating someone to legacy is what remains when the person we are imitating is no longer with us. And a lot of times we think of, of somebody passing away when we think of legacy, but I don't want to simply kind of define it in that area because I think you can leave a legacy and be leaving a legacy throughout your whole lifetime. I don't think that's something we need to wait until we die to do, okay? So it's what remains when the person we're imitating is no longer with us. So maybe you, um, maybe you changed friend groups, or maybe you were uh, imitating your boss. You really loved how they do things, and then they go and work for somewhere else, or you go and work for somewhere else. Or you know, maybe you were coached by a specific coach on a sports team, and you're being invested in by that person, and then you change sport teams, or you pass on to like the next level, right? So there's different people that we kind of get like into their part of their legacy. We start imitating them and stuff, and then things change because circumstances in our life changed. So what I want us to think about is how do knowing these people, how does spending time with them, how does learning from them, how does seeing them respond to different life experiences? Or how, um, like how have those things shaped you? How is that person impacting you? And this can be good or bad. Not everybody we're imitating or being influenced by is leaving a good legacy. So we want to be intentional with that. It can also be intentional or unintentional. I've realized as a parent that how I respond to dis different circumstances can sometimes be how I'm unintentionally leaving a legacy. So we want to make sure that we're leaving go a good legacy and we're being intentional. So I want to do an example because it wouldn't be a family service if we didn't have some sermon illustrations here, right? Oh, man, and I forgot. Never mind. Okay, that's okay. I forgot the batteries at home. We're all good. <laughs> We're all good. I've got the example on the screen. We'll keep rolling. So at its simplest, we can think of legacy as a circuit. So we're taking you guys back to grade five science. How many people are in grade five in this room? A couple. <laughs> so my grade fives, you guys are probably experts at this, right? So we can think of legacy as a circuit, as a series circuit at its simplest. So we have, in this example, we're going to say that God is the battery and that we're a light bulb. And in a circuit, you're going to connect your power source to the light bulb and connect them with wires. And the light bulb will, what do you think, when it's connected to the battery? It's going to light up. Good job. So it's going to light up. So we're, that's kind of our relationship with God, right? We're connected with God through salvation. We have a relationship with him. We're doing life. And it's good. We're, we're lit up, right? We're filled with Holy Spirit. We're loving God. Life is awesome. And other people see our light. 
and they go, hey, like, I, I would like that too. That looks good. I would like that. And so we connect them in to our little circuit here. So we're all connected. We're all lit, lit up. We're loving Jesus. Life is great. But how many people know that that doesn't last forever, right? We go through seasons. Life is not great all the time. And what happens in a series circuit is if anything happens to one of these bulbs, well, actually, kids, take a guess. We're going to take a hypothesis. If I break this bulb or unscrew it and take it out, what do you think is going to happen to the other two? Shout it out. What do you think? They're going to go out. Man, you guys are experts. Thank you, grade fives. So if I do anything to any of these bulbs in a series circuit, the other ones will go out because they are not directly attached to the power source. They're connected to each other, but as soon as something happens to one of them, the other one's lights will go out. So let's look at a parallel circuit. It's just a fancy word for just saying these are connected differently, right? So we have... It's kind of the same thing as the beginning. We've got our power source, with it, which is God. We've got our light bulb, which is us. And we're connected here. And, we'll, and because people see our light, guys, it's attractive. They join on and they're like, I would like that for my life too. But this person is intentional with saying, do you know what? I would love to mentor you. I would love to teach you about Jesus. I would love to, for you to see in my life what he is like. But you also need to know Jesus for yourself. So these bulbs are connected. Do you guys see how this cord here connects them to the power source, and they're connected to each other. So if anything happens to this bulb, what do you think is going to happen to the other two? They're going to stay on because their light is not dependent on the other bulbs. And what I want to remind us, guys, is as parents or teachers or coaches or whatever you may be, wherever your sphere of influence and leadership is, are you being intentional to not just connect people to yourself, but to God and you? Because Paul said it wasn't enough to just be imitators of him. It was imitate him as he imitates God. So ultimately, we need to be imitators of God. Kids, this applies to you too, not just adults, okay? Do you realize that there's kids at school, kids at church, friends, who think you're awesome and want to be just like you? Are you pointing them to Jesus? That's the question I have for us. So as, as parents, it gets a little more serious, right? Because we feel responsible. We've got, we've got people we're responsible for, right? We've got kids. We've got maybe staff. We've got sports teams, we've got whatever it may be that we're responsible for, and we need to make sure that we're not just pointing people to ourselves. But kids, you're, you're growing into that. You're kind of building your little circuit right now where you're, you're experiencing who Jesus is, what he's like, and you've got this kind of happy little circuit on, but it's not going to be long before people say, oh, I want what Dezo has. He loves, I, I see something different about him, and I see his love for Jesus. Or I want, I want what Scarlett has. She's so caring and compassionate. Why is she like that? And people are going to start to want to add on to the little circuit you've got with Jesus. And you need to make sure you're being intentional to connect them to him, not just to you. I had a lot of friends in high, in high school that went to church every Sunday with their parents that said they loved Jesus that said they wanted to follow him. And when we graduated, I can think of like two of us who still serve and love Jesus. Because when the parents or the pastors or the good friend groups in their lives were like went their different ways, right? We went to different colleges, we moved to different cities, whatever it may be. When that was removed, they realized they were in a serious circuit. They were connected to Jesus through other people and not for themselves. And I feel this, man, I feel this so deep. This isn't in my notes. I feel this so deeply in my heart for youth right now. Guys, I feel like COVID has been so unfair to you. And you have been tried by fire in this season, right? You have been forced to discover, is my relationship with God a series circuit or is it parallel? Am I connected to him for myself or am I connected to him because of friends or circumstances or when life is good or when I have the right leader in my life? 
And I just, yeah, I just want to say, like, if there are people in this room where you're realizing I was connected to God because of my circumstances or because I had really good people in my life and now they're gone or now things have changed, like I feel COVID specific, it, you can take this opportunity and reattach yourself to God, right? Like there, it's not like, oh, now I'm just stuck in this, right? And parents, I just feel, I just pray grace over parents who are going through this with their kids right now Youth, it is not wrong to question if Jesus is the only answer. And I'm so confident of that. That's one thing. I'm a pastor's kid. I grew up in the church my whole life. I was dragged to every service, every, like I've served on every team since I was little. And there was a time in, in my high school years where I asked my parents, I said, I believe in Jesus and I love him, but why Jesus? Why did you pick, Dad, why did you pick to be a pastor uh, in this faith, right? Like, why didn't you pick any of the other ones? And my parents went there with me. They were so confident of how much Jesus loved me and how much my, the answers to my questions could be found in him. They were not afraid of my questions. And they went there with me. They even went to this, they even went to the point of saying, we know actually people who go to churches of different faiths that we love, that are, we're friends with, and we will arrange, if you want, for you to go to church with them and you to see how this faith operates, and you can ask them their questions, and we would love to sit down together, and if you just need to hear it out, what, your, what the options are, I think it'll become obvious to you why we chose Jesus. So, yeah, sorry, that was not in my notes, but I just, I want to preach to all of us today, right? We've, we're multi-generational, and I, oh, man, youth, God is so proud of you. He loves you so much. So what do you want to pass on? What do you have inside of you to pass on to future generations? What knowledge, what skills, what gifts could you be passing on to those around you? I just want to recap real quick. So we all have people we're imitating and people who are imitating us. So let's be intentional. Let's make sure they're picking up on good things, right? <laughs> Legacy is what remains when the person we are imitating is no longer with us. What they have passed on to us is their legacy. We are meant to be imitators of Jesus first. And we need to keep, be careful to point those we are imitating to Jesus and not just ourselves. And Haley and I, <laughs> it's funny, we kind of wrote out the sermon and I was like, and we kind of felt, oh, it's done. Like, there's legacy. Let's point people to Jesus. Let's make sure we're following him too kind of thing. And we've all been given something by God to pass on to others. Um, but we realized that this is, there's actually a twofold, it's twofold. When you're a believer, legacy has multiple parts. And this, is, this ends up being the overemphasized part. We realized that there's actually a so this is our personal legacy that we're passing on. But we actually, as believers, are called into a corporate legacy. And that's what Haley's going to share about. Yeah. <clears throat> we are many parts of one body. All of our gifts are for the building of one kingdom, for one God. It's time to think outside of ourselves, outside of our family, and think corporate. Think church family. We have a family legacy that we are leaving behind. We have a gateway family legacy that, we leave, that we're leaving behind. If you guys have your Bibles this morning, you can open up to Ephesians 4. We'll start at verse 1. And just to give you some context, Paul, in the earlier part of the book of Ephesians, Paul has just ta uh, been talking to the Gentiles. So a Gentile was anybody that wasn't a Jew. He was talking to them about how what Jesus did on the cross um, when he died for us and rose again, what Jesus did is he actually made a way for the Gentiles to become a part of God's family. You see, the Jews, they had always been chosen by God. They were God's family. But now the Gentiles got to be a part of that same family. Is anybody excited or thankful that they are now part of God's family? I am. I'm really thankful. <laughs> and so, uh, starting at verse 1, Paul says, he says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a ma manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Okay, so this calling is to walk as a family, to be united. 
with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Everyone say one. So there is one, say one, body and one spirit. Just as you are called to the one hope. Okay, we can do better, can't we? Every time you see the word one, say it out loud with me. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there is one body and spirit, just as you were called to hope that belongs to your call. There is one Lord, sorry guys, <laughs> faith, baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. I don't know if you guys caught it, but we are, we are one. We are all one in the family of God. As one family in Christ, we have one family legacy, which we are passing down from one generation to the next. And this legacy has actually already been defined for us. If we are, if we are all as individuals imitating Christ, as a, as a family, we will be imitating Christ, and the legacy we will leave, that we will leave behind is love. John 13, 35 says this, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Everybody will know that Gateway Family Church is a disciple of Jesus, our disciples of Jesus, by the love that we have for one another. This is the legacy that we get to leave behind together. The legacy of self-giving love. It's the same kind of love that Pastor Landon had talked about last week. The word is agape. Can everyone say agape? Yeah, it looks like laying down your life for your friend. It's self-sacrificing. It's not the lovey-dovey, easy kind of love. <laughs> Okay, I have these puzzle pieces here. Does anybody here like doing puzzles? Yeah, me too. I love puzzles. So I have a big box of puzzle pieces, and I'm pretty sure they're all from the same puzzle, but I actually have no idea because I don't know what the, I don't have the big picture. But here we go. I have this one little puzzle piece. Each of us, what we have to offer, our personal legacy is like a little single puzzle piece. Who we are, what we have to offer is beautiful, it's unique, it's important. Although, it is not the whole picture. We know that when, you, who has ever made a puzzle and there's a puzzle piece missing? Okay, is that not the most frustrating thing? You're like, I spent so long on this and there's a hole in it. That is how important one puzzle piece is. It might be small and it might be one of a thousand, but it's so important. As puzzle pieces are connected together, the greater picture begins to reveal itself and it becomes even more beautiful. If it's a beautiful puzzle. I've done some ugly ones, but you know, that's besides the point. Um, when we come together, when we, with our legacy, with what we have to offer, with our love, when we come together, there's a bigger picture that gets revealed to the world around us. Our small individual reflections of Jesus grow into a greater revelation of who God is. This is a bigger picture. Our culture is so individualistic. It's all about me and my family and what I'm doing and what I wanna leave behind, but the family of God is not individualistic. We are one family from all over the place. We all come from different places, but, but we are one family, united in love. 1 John 4.12 says, And no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. He lives in gateway. If gateway loves one another, God lives in gateway. And his love is made complete in gateway. 
So altogether, the church is the expression of God to the world. Now, the church is a global thing. It's not just Gateway. It's not just Edmonton or Leduc or Canada. It's a global thing. But can you imagine with me for a second? Even if we are just a portion of the puzzle, like a chunk of the puzzle, what if there were no pieces missing in our chunk? Everyone was connected By, through love, with what they have to offer. Everyone serving one another in love at Gateway. And our chunk was complete. Can you imagine the impact we could have in our region if no pieces were missing? If we fail to connect into the family of God, lay down our lives for one another and pass on what we have to give, our piece of the puzzle will be missing. We must steward what we have been given in the context of family so that God can fully reveal himself to the world. Are you guys getting it this morning? Like, it's actually so big. As we were preparing, I was like, oh my goodness, this is so big. Like, we're so used to thinking so small. But we are one. We are to work together. We are all the bride of Christ. We are one body with many parts, and every part is important. We are one family building one kingdom for one God. So, my questions for you this morning. First of all, what is your personal legacy? What is inside of you that you can give on, that you can pass on to the next generation? Or to people that don't quite know Jesus yet, what can you pass on? Give you a minute to think. Kids, what can you share? What do you know about Jesus that you can share with people around you? Youth, what gifts do you have that you can use to point people to Jesus? That you can use to serve the church family? Adults, what do you have that you can use to church to serve the church family? To love the church family? Secondly, I want to ask you, I guess it's I already asked you, but what does it look like? I want you to ask the Lord this. <clears throat> what does it look like, Jesus, for me to submit my legacy to the greater legacy of self-sacrificing love so that you are revealed through gateway? What do I have to give? Jesus, how do I partner with what you want to do in the greater context of our family so that Leduc and surrounding area province even, can know Jesus, can see God. How can I serve Gateway Family with the gifts that I've been given so that God can be made known? Guys, right now, um, well, first of all, a great way, great place to pass on what you have is kids' ministry. And right now, guys, we need your help. Rachel and I, we are two pieces of this massive puzzle. We don't have everything our kids need. We need your help. We need your help discipling the next generation. Every piece is important. Everyone has something that they can give. Just because we're on the stage, it doesn't mean we're more important. It doesn't mean our puzzle piece is more important than somebody else's. Everybody has something to give. In the elementary class, grade one to five, we need four people that will serve once a month and lead a small group of kids. All you have to do is pass on what you know about Jesus. Pass on what you have to give. I'm not expecting you to bring something you don't have. Just pass on what you do have. In the preschool room, we need six people serving once a month. And in the toddlers, um, toddler room, we need three people serving once a month. So ask the Lord, is that where I'm supposed to be passing on what I have? And please be obedient, because our kids need you. Our kids need what you have to give. Our legacy will, be, will stop short if nothing gets passed on to the next generation. Because like I said, Rachel and I, just two puzzle pieces. That's it. And you can see how, you can't see how small that is. 